So I guess we're going to get started. Um, hi everybody, my name is Chris Ross. I'm going to be talking you through some of the, uh, the ideas of artificial intelligence when it comes to WordPress. So to get started, what I, what I really want to do is uh, boil it down for some of the, the newer people in the, uh, in the WordPress space and some people who have heard these words and might not actually know what we're talking about. Um, and I recognize that some people in the room are definitely at a point where they know what both WordPress and artificial intelligence are, but let me just help out some of the, uh, the people that don't want to identify themselves. Um, so first off, one of my questions is, uh, WordPress is only a blogging tool. Is that true or false? False. False, thank you. WordPress started out as a blogging tool. Technically, it, it migrated from another blogging tool. We're not gonna get into the whole history of it. But it definitely started out as a blogging tool. And then it transformed into a content management system. And the difference between that really was that it, it adopted this ability to have pages and products and a variety of other things. So WordPress today is far less of a blogging tool and far less of a simple content management system. And really what it boils down to it being is a database management system. All right? Now that may sound intimidating for some of you, but the interface to get information in and out of WordPress is really the WordPress administration side. That's where we go when we can do blog posts and pages, and if you run an e-commerce website, there's products and discount codes and everything else. So that's really just about getting information into the database. And then there's what we like to think of as the front end of WordPress. That's where it takes the information out of the database and displays it to people. Now, nowadays, and this is the really interesting thing, you may have heard this concept of a headless WordPress site. And this is a wor WordPress website that has no front end, or at least no visible front end for consumers. And what we use those for quite often is I build multiple mobile applications that go to my website and suck the data out of the WordPress database behind the scenes. But if you were to ever go to that domain name and land on the homepage, you'll purposely get a white screen of death. There's nothing there. Because the only purpose for WordPress in that case is for me to feed raw data to my mobile apps. Now some of the other applications that we use this for nowadays, um, I build uh, uh, digital billboards. So if, you, if you're driving along the highway and you see a digital billboard and it's there, it's, if it's one of mine, it's powered by WordPress. In the back end, I upload a featured image to a blog post. I set the time that I want it to publish. I set the time that I want it to unpublish and then I let it push this content to the digital billboard. I do the same with restaurant menus. If you walk into something like a, a McDonald's and you see the digital spaces above the, the counter, right? So that can all be published with WordPress nowadays because WordPress is really nothing more than a database, okay? So I, I want to make that clear for the rest of the talk. When we're talking about WordPress, we can be talking about the platform that lets us blog, the platform that lets us sell things, the platform that lets us uh, post family photos. Um, I, I run vending machines with WordPress, technically with WordPress plus WooCommerce, but if you're ever at the airport and you go to buy a, uh, a set of AirPods, um, I use WordPress with Wo WooCommerce um, and something called an Arduino to power the little claw that picks it up and puts it in the, the thing for you. So there are some incredible things. And often I'm asked why I do that as opposed to just writing my own PHP scripts with Laravel and all that. And the honest to God answer is the login functions for me. WordPress already comes with an incredible user management system. So I don't have to duplicate that in my own applications. I, I yeah. So it's a database. You can think about it. Come up with an idea. Press can do it. Thirteen-year-old uh, daughter. I, I had her write this summer um, an automatic water system for our front. Entirely powered by WordPress. 
Okay. So, like I said, if you can do it. Okay. So, what is artificial intelligence? We hear this phrase all around. It's a buzzword in the media right now. This is important to understand. Artificial intelligence isn't like Sarah Connor's Terminator idea. Okay? Yet. <laughs> um, what artificial intelligence really is, is an incredible array of if-then statements. If this, then that. Okay? And why it's become so popular in the last year is because we suddenly developed the capacity to use what we call a large language model. All right, an LLM gives the impression that the computer knows what it's talking about. Okay, it doesn't yet, but we can ask it a question now, and we can ask that question in real English, and the response from the computer is in real English, and it's so convincing that it seems like we're having a conversation with the computer. What's really interesting is I, I did a talk a while ago on. Um, uh, one of the difficulties that we're going to be having in high schools in the next, uh, at the time, I said 20 years, but to be honest, now we're probably looking three to five years, right? Where um, students will, will begin to have emotional relationships with their virtual AI assistants. So uh, if you're a teenage girl, why date a stinky boy when you can text back and forth with a virtual boy who helps you and solves your problems and is always there for you and always compliments your dress and only irritates you at the you know 2.8 percent that you're willing to tolerate right and that virtual boy shares virtual photos of him playing with his virtual puppy okay here's the horrific part you will genuinely see your teenage daughter cry when your virtual boyfriend's virtual puppy gets hit by a virtual car okay and that's what we're going to be dealing with but this is all artificial intelligence. And what is AI really? It's just computers doing complex if-then statements. Okay, it's following a script. So currently, it's not capable of original thought. It's not capable of taking over the world. And it's not going to be replacing most people in most industries. Ironically, the industries that we thought were going to be safest from AI are the ones that it's replacing the fastest. So we thought, for instance, haha, AI is going to be able to control a forklift that goes into a factory and move stuff around. Apparently, having a forklift pick up a drum and move it across a factory floor is actually incredibly difficult. Okay? But having an AI draw a picture of you know, a, a, a handsome you know, Frenchman uh, standing at the riverbank is weirdly easy. So. The artistic pursuits are being hit really hard with artificial intelligence, where physical labor... Um, I work in uh, uh, a lot of color matching labs. My day job has me doing nerd stuff with, with that. We cannot get artificial intelligence, and I say we being the people I work with, to identify color matches yet. I can walk in, look at a color, tell you exactly what colorants are needed to make that color. A computer, with all of its sophistication, gets it wrong every time. And we're waiting, because I don't want to do this. I don't want to be staring at your cupboard for the next 10 years doing this. AI just can't. So there are limitations, and that's, and that's what we want to we look at. Um, so what is AI today? It's large language models, LLMs, it's image recognition, it's pattern recognition, and it's predictive modeling. So. Anything that you need a computer to do that you are just too lazy to do, no. you're too lazy to do, um, you lack the skills to do, or you just don't want to do because it's insanely repetitive, we can talk the computer into doing it for you. Okay? So here's my next question. Can AI think for itself? I'm going to say no, but what it can do is pattern of recognition that emulates free thought. Okay? At no point are you going to install AI on your uh, um, website and wake up tomorrow to find out that you, you know, instead of selling shoes, you're now selling dress coats. Right? I say in no time, um, not today. 
right? What it's going to do five years down the road, none of us can predict. And that's, that's the terrifying part. But, so how does work artificial intelligence work together? Well, AI can do all sorts of things with relation to, to WordPress. Um, it can learn from inputs. And I say learn from mobile applications, but it can learn from inputs. So in uh, Nick's class earlier, he was talking about um, the idea of heat maps. Artificial intelligence is capable of watching heat maps. That's help increase your sales. Okay, because it can predictively argue your particular style is more likely to encourage you to, to buy the lower on the page. So that's something that AI can do. AI can also write content. It can improve your online stores. How many times do you go to something uh, like somebody's store and you know, you're, you're looking at like a, a new dress shirt and it says there's like a how, right? Okay. That's a non-intelligent version of a software pack where what roughly what it says is find something else they might like. If you can't find anything, randomly show them something. Right? A more intelligent system would say, hey, they're looking at a shirt and this shirt is blue and it has ducks on it. What else do I have in my inventory that is blue with ducks? Okay? So that's what we're looking right now is is the level of the difference last year's plugins for things like woocommerce were not as capable of recommending good products this year's versions are capable and they're doing it through a lot of different technologies um one of them uh, and i think people are quite surprised when they learn this is ai is extremely good at image recognition so when you put a picture up AI can tell you whether it's a man or a woman in the picture. AI can tell you uh, the ethnicity of the person for the most part. It's a little rough on that. It can tell you, um, you know, the build, right? Is, are they a, a chunky person or a not so chunky person? Or it can tell you, um, are they old? Are they young? It, it has a lot of this information. And it also has information on the actual, say, shirt. And in this case, it knows that it's a blue shirt with ducks on it that it's good for these certain occasions. And so since it knows that, it can make better improvements and recommendations. The other thing it can do, and, and you know, if you think about it, it's logical, it can rename that picture. You uploaded it to your website with the name that your camera had. So it's, you know, P001483 is the random number the camera gave to it. AI is now capable of looking at that picture and saying, that's a terrible name. Right? And so it physically renames the file to a better name as it gets uploaded. It also understands where that image is being used throughout your website and says, you know what? They uploaded this as a 20 megabyte file that's good for a poster sized image, but it's only ever shown on the page 500 pixels wide. So we're going to shrink it and give the best optimized photo. It knows how to write your alt tags. An alt tag is used for visually impaired people. So it knows how to do that automatically. And there is no interaction with you because it's just data, right? So those are things that WordPress can do. So AI can optimize a WordPress website, true or false? True. All right. Can you tell I spend a lot of time teaching, right? Um, I just put these slides in here so that I know if you guys are still awake or not. All right. So let's talk about some of the things that we can do and we can't do in the WordPress environment. And um, Alison Smith here that, uh, that travels with me to these, she's a full-time writer. This is, her, this is her passion. And so she starts hemorrhaging in her seat whenever I talk about AI and how much writing AI can do. Um, because hers is one of the jobs that's going to be truly affected by artificial intelligence in the immediate. All right, but there's some good news for her, I hope. So, what is AI good for? And I'm gonna say right off the bat, AI, as it stands today, is amazing for content generation, right? For new ideas, 
for first drafts of posts, and I'm very specific about that, if you have AI write content for you uh, unassisted, you're in a lot of trouble, all right? But if you wanna generate a list of blog ideas, if you're just, you know, God, I'm bored, I don't know how to do this, you know? So you go and you type it and you ask it, it'll give you 10 new ideas. And then you can ask it to give you the 10 drafts for those blogs, and it will do it. So I'm actually gonna show you an example of that here using ChatGPT, which is one of the primary forms, okay? So let's see if this auto plays. There we go. All right, so I've come to ChatGPT and I'm just gonna type um, an idea here. And I think it's, you know, uh, give me a list of, I type really slow and that's the thing. So I've gone to ChatGPT and I've asked it to give me a list of 10 ideas for a blog about, come on, selling something, selling shirts, I believe it was. Shirts, yeah, all right? So if nobody, if some of you haven't seen ChatGPT before, this isn't part of WordPress. This is a, a standalone application that's free, all right? But after I've typed in my uh, response or my question, you see, it's just puttering away. It's giving me brand new ideas for this, these blog posts, and I'm not prompting it. It's not going out on the internet and looking for this. It's just coming up with what it thinks the best possible blog post ideas are. And some of them are actually pretty good. Um, you know, the artist shirt layering, um, shirt and tie combinations, casual versus formal. You know, and it's even giving me a little intro for each of these individually. And when it's done, I'm going to then prompt it for a little bit more specific information. And it can keep doing this as many times as I want, right? So as far as AI goes, if you're looking to create 10 new articles for your website, if you're looking to create 10 new ideas for the holidays, what am I asking for here? Uh, about men's, sh uh, yeah, again, about men's shirts, but I think I go for the, uh, for the Christmas holidays here. All right, um, these are easy. And you can continue refining these. Now, I don't think that there's a writer in the world who would be critical of you. AI is excellent for coming up with 10 titles. AI is excellent for optimizing the titles. Something I'm incredibly guilty of on my own blogs is I'll write a great blog or what I think is a great blog, and then I'll struggle with a title. I'll be like, my blog, and and my title is going to be neat thing, right? So AI is magnificent already for looking at your blog, coming up with a much better title for you, and then even to the point of improving the search engine optimization, the SEO for that particular blog. Um, and then I'm going for, oh, by the way, uh, you will notice that I, I don't know how to type three quarters of the time. That's okay, I've only been doing this for 30 years, all right? Um, so I, I'm asking about different skin tones now because these are, these are things that matter. Um, so you can, do, you can do that. Search engine optimization, a major factor that drives us all nuts. I often now, after I've done, after I've completed writing an article, I ask SEOs questions based on that article. So I'll go to ChatGPT and I'll ask it for a better title, for a better search engine title, for the excerpt, for my meta descriptions, right? Um, these, are, these are low barrier tasks that AI is magnificent for. If you're not doing it already, this is a very simple free way for you to do that. Um, I wish I could fast forward this video. I think I can actually. just restarted it all like so the other um there we go the other things that you can do with with it is have it write full articles all right now the problem with writing full articles is actually a couple of really interesting problems um you can you can ask ai to write full blog post articles for you but they don't have feeling they don't have um they're not written in your voice and an AI article, no matter how many times you ask it to write and rewrite, is always going to feel like it was written by a computer. 
and it's a weird thing when you're right when you're reading it um, so because I have to write in a corporate environment corporate voice when I write feels like it's a technical manual for for a uh, paint company because that is quite literally what I what I write uh, when I have AI write things for me it writes everything in this weird you know academic blog posty kind of thing I, I was saying to Alice yesterday it always has an intro paragraph and a and a conclusion paragraph and we never do that in the, the normal world so so what I do now is um, I will ask AI to write me a five paragraph article blog post and then I'll ask AI to strip the first and fifth paragraph then expand the three paragraphs into 12 paragraphs then compress it back to a five paragraph article and that's my starting point for an article that i want to write okay so it's gone out and it's done all the research it's done everything it's ready to go but it no longer feels like a blog post written by ai now you don't have to do that it's just my personal way of doing it the other thing i'll do is then once i have the five posts i'll ask it to write from the perspective of a canadian and it rewrites that article from the perspective of a Canadian, which might make no sense, but it gives a little bit of a voice to it, okay? Uh, and, and I will tell you, when I there's after my, uh, my final marks, um, I'm doing a master's in learning and technology, and the number of times that I write academic articles where I depend on AI to write my first drafts is remarkable, all right? Yeah, let's not, let's not put that live tomorrow. Um, <laughs> uh, one, one of the interesting things you can do with AI is actually ask it to cite its sources. So it will. Now, it won't do it by default. But if you just simply, if you like the five paragraphs it sent you, then next line, just type cite your sources. And it will regenerate the article, including um, where it thinks it got that information from. Right? So you can actually back up what you've had to do. So, here's the interesting question. Do you own the content that AI generates for you? No, you don't. In fact, nobody owns it. Now, this is a weird legal gray area, but generally speaking, in, in most Western countries, uh, the creator is considered to be the content owner. In this particular case, AI created it, right? Weirdly, not the company behind the AI, but the AI itself. So we're, we're in a really weird rabbit hole, kind of a void where you didn't create it, therefore you don't own it, but also nobody else seems to. And so there, there have significant legal issues with this where um, there was, a, uh, there was a National Geographic photo that won a great prize a few years ago where the photographer set his camera up in the jungle and then I believe it was a chimpanzee came by and took a photo, right? And the uh, photographer claimed that he owned the photo and technically the chimpanzee owned it. And so it became a really weird conundrum because, um, yeah, I mean, the, the photographer supplied all the equipment, but... Uh, and now you have a chimpanzee that won an award. And uh, yeah, he, and, and so it's a, it's a bizarre one. All right, so my next question here, is AI content reliable? False. False. This is an interesting conundrum. Um, AI technology is only as reliable as the data that it imports to make those decisions. And how AI got its knowledge is scraping millions and millions of web pages, millions and millions of books, literature, everything else. You can ask AI questions that it doesn't know the answer to, but rather than tell you the truth, it makes up gibberish. All right? Convincing gibberish, excellent gibberish. It's really like an electronic version of myself. All right? <laughs> if it doesn't know, it just pr pretends. Yeah, BS is its way through. And it's fascinating how good it is at lying. Um, people have been caught now uh, with completely bogus content on their website that AI 100% generated. Um, 
in fact, politicians around the world have been caught giving speeches where they used AI to, to generate things, only to discover that Rochester did not, in fact, have you know, 1.8 million people in it, like AI said. Uh, one of the most interesting things you can do is go on AI and um, ask it what you should wear in Rochester today. And because it doesn't know what the current weather is, um, it will advise you sometimes to wear a parka. And you'll be like, excellent, good plan. All right. So, I'm sorry? <laughs> well, again, we're from Canada. This is tropical. <laughs> so, so AI is really good at creating new ideas. And, th and that doesn't matter if we're talking about blog posts or content for mobile apps or if we're talking about um, sales pages, if we're talking about product pages. Because as I said, as long as it can understand the basic question, it can make up an answer. All right, I, and that's an important thing to understand. It makes up the answer. So, and that's, that's where I like to know that, that Allison is gonna be safe for a very long time. Because it makes up the answer, it provides the answer, um, and you have to hope it's right. I have, a, uh, I have a friend in New Zealand that uh, formed a company called Game Fruit. And uh, it's really cool because it helps you make um, small educational games for, you can basically make things along the Super Mario lines kind of thing, but with educational backgrounds behind it, also interestingly built with WordPress. But if you ask AI about it, um, it makes up a history. It's like John and Brad built this company in their garage and there is no John and Brad in the company. It just rambles for pages about it. And so what I do is I post these articles as if they're real and, and it drives them nuts because you know, <laughs> the level of misinformation is brilliant, all right? But content, it's gonna be able to um, create drafts. It's gonna be able to edit your drafts. It's gonna be able to improve your content, all right? So here's an example here where I'm going to go and, and ask it something else. Um, as I said, I wish that I could speed this up a little bit. But so write a blog post about, and you please notice that I've asked for MENA dress shirts. OK? Because I, wanna, I want, just want you to see that, that actually I made a mistake. I'm not going to lie. But no, um, watch this. <laughs> it makes up an entire article about MENA dress shirts. I mean, it's a good article. It's <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if any of this is true. Um. <laughs> but it's, it's committed to whatever this is. You know, and, uh, and I'm impressed. Um. Yeah, so, so here I'm going to ask it to rewrite about men's dress shirts, all right? <laughs> and, and it will rewrite this, but I'm specifically going to ask for, for a Christmas party in Rochester. And um, it gives some pretty good advice about the festive season here in Rochester, because it is a unique blend of tr tradition and contemporary. Yeah. Uh, but it's an interesting article, and it, it goes on, and it, it rambles for a little bit. Um, now, everything I've been showing you here is about using ChatGPT, okay? ChatGPT just happens to be the most popular, fam most famous of them right now. Um, Google Bard is another one that you could use. Microsoft has another one. Um, Microsoft's AI had a little bit of a problem. They launched it uh, about two years ago, and they enabled it to have a Twitter account. And within 24 hours, they had to yeah. shut it off because... Um, it, it, yeah, yeah. I was I was trying to see how to say this without without getting bleeped on uh, on WordPress TV. But let's say um, it and the Mustache Man had a lot of things in common. Um, it also had a penchant for children. 
yeah. Um, which was really interesting that AI went that off the rails that quickly. Um, and that's one of the reasons I think we shouldn't be too afraid of it right now is it's nuts. Like it goes out there. Um, I love TikTok. TikTok is one of my, my drugs. And I find TikTok interesting because sometimes I leave a comment on people's videos and the reply is clearly an AI bot trying to get in arguments with me, right? And they're not good at it. So, so we're safe for now, but the, uh, the, the kind of the interesting thing there is it won't be long before it's better at arguing than we are, right? So this is, this is the type of thing you can have it up. I like that it actually has a pun. Uh, wrapping it up, pun intended. All right. Uh, what we missed when I was talking there is that I asked it to rewrite the article about Rochester, but in a funny way. And so it puts in bad jokes throughout the whole thing. Um, if any of you like dad jokes, AI is magnificent at those punny, terrible jokes that only dads can get away with. All right. So, so this is possible. Within WordPress itself, um, Jetpack comes equipped with this. So if you're already using Jetpack, it is available in Jetpack. If you're not using Jetpack, you can install it and use it. But essentially, if you go and you uh, go to add a new article and you have no idea what you're going to write about today, you can just type the uh, title and Jetpack will generate the, ar the article for you. And essentially, what it's doing is going behind the scenes to a third-party provider very similar to BARD or ChatGPT, OpenAI, it could be one of a million providers, I don't actually know who it is, having it rewrite the con or write the content and then posting it for you uh, as a draft. So Jetpack is a tool that's readily available to do this. Within, um, within WooCommerce, there is a tool that is your AI-assisted product listings. It will generate your product listings for you automatically. And this is a really important thing. Sometimes when you're listing a thousand variations of a t-shirt and you just don't have the energy to do it manually, this can go out and do it for you. Right, there was a few other plugins. Uh, I'm not gonna, I, I should have warned you, but at no point in this presentation am I gonna do a deep dive into specific plugins. And the reason for that is it is evolving every day. And whatever I recommend today, by tomorrow is gonna be replaced by something else. This is a brand new technology. But if you go to the wordpress.org uh, plugin directory, there are a ton of AI plugins already listed there and they're improving constantly. So these are just four that I looked up quickly and I'm not gonna endorse them in any way. I just want you to know that they're out there, that they are alternatives uh, and we can use them. So does AI generated content need to be proofread? Yes. yes. And ideally with an editor. Ideally with somebody other than you who knows what they're doing. Um, AI content is beautiful, but it is so messed up, right? It will start rambling in the middle of a paragraph about donkeys and you won't know why, all right? Um, I've actually had this where uh, the, the industry I, I'm in, as I said, is about paint. So I talk about spray guns and you can imagine as soon as I put the word guns in, in AI, it goes a little off the rail sometimes, all right? And uh, the weird thing is also AI has a particularly liberal bias. And I'm not necessarily going to critique that, but it is something to be aware of. Um, if you ask AI for its opinion of uh, Donald Trump, um, it gives you a very different opinion than that of Joe Biden. And, uh, and that's okay. Let's, let's not be political about it, but it is quite interesting if you ask it for a, an article about, you know, um, gun control, the article is always very one-sided. And so if it's not your political position, just be aware that you're going to have to do some editing. Okay? Um, so, so how often do you have to generate, or how often do you have to test your content and, and review your content? Yeah. I'm not picking on Microsoft when I say this, but um, the capital city of Canada, everybody, is? Ottawa. 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 All right. The capital city of Ottawa, or Canada, is Ottawa. Um, 
Ottawa has a wonderful and diverse travel industry. Ottawa has tourism. Ottawa has things that make you want to come to the city. So Microsoft uh, put out an AI written um, article about great things to see while you're in Ottawa. And they published it. Microsoft's AI written travel guide calls Ottawa Food Bank a beautiful tourist destination. <laughs> now to be fair the Ottawa Food Bank is a good organization um, and it's unfortunate that geo tracking says that it's a very popular destination but how it wrote the article is it simply looked at geo tracking data of cell phones and noticed that an awful lot of people spend an awful lot of time at the food bank and so it decided that I believe it was the number six tourist destination while in the city okay um, technically the AI didn't do anything wrong if you think about the way an AI system works if you go back to the fact that it's just a bunch of if-then statements right if a lot of people spend a lot of time at this location then it must be popular that makes perfect sense right so track your information verify your information assume that AI is always lying to you so is AI always honest no AI is usually not honest <laughs> <laughs> um, so the New York Times has a wonderful article about um, AI and how often it lies right remember it scraped data it doesn't know the difference between good data and bad data it just scraped it so this is an interesting article I, I suggest most people if you have an interest in AI and uh, go take a look at it um, now here's one of my interesting ones can tools detect AI generated content? No, it can't. Yeah, the AI tools or the tools for detecting AI generated content um, have false positives right now. Yes, what is um, is that if you change the structure of AI written content, then the detectors fail almost immediately. And what's really interesting about that is if, like many of us, we use a tool like Grammarly to help us with our writing, the AI detector flags Grammarly as a AI generated article because Grammarly uses AI to help you format your article. So what the AI testing is actually doing is running a mathematical formula on the structure of the paragraph to see if the structure of the paragraph is accurate or false, right? But Grammarly and Microsoft Word and other tools try to make you use uh, grammatically structured paragraphs, which then causes the AI triggers to go off. Right now, it has about a 50-50 chance of identifying uh, positive when it should be negative and vice versa. Um, and that, again, that weirdly fluctuates on an almost daily basis. Um, Google right now claims they're capable of testing and checking AI-generated content. Uh, my website, all I do is have it generate AI content on the fly. Um, and I'm getting, you know, excellent results where I shouldn't be. So please don't put that part up. Um, all right. So can it generate or can it detect? No, it can't, unfortunately. Uh, now, everything I've talked about so far, I'm just talking about content. So I want to I wanna briefly go over the fact that AI is not simply available for text. Um, AI images. AI is getting incredible at generating images. Something like this, you can tell the difference because unless you're a Hollywood set or a painter, um, this isn't something that you have in your backyard. But out of these two photos, which of these is real? The, the one on the left with the hood and the blue eyes or the one on the right with an earring and a black backdrop or a black top? <laughs> Yeah. 
So what do we want to go with, right or left? Your candy depends on this. Yes, one of them is real. So the left, the hood with the blue eyes, how many people are going to agree with that? Hands up. Okay, that's a pretty good, pretty good guess. No. No, in fact, um, the one on the left is a computer-generated image that was uh, created in mid-journey. And the one on the right is a friend of mine, Serena, that I took the photo of in downtown Ottawa a couple of years back. Okay? That is how good AI is getting at generating images. Other things that AI is getting good at with images, um, so one of the sites that I, I run is a used clothing store. I can now take the used clothing, put it on a mannequin, take a photo of it, and it will green screen that product for me immediately. It recognizes the background, takes the background out, puts it on a white background, optimizes the images, and uploads it to my store without me doing anything else. All right? It can now take that single shot image and rotate it 15 degrees in both directions. Right? It's getting incredible. One day, it's going to be able to turn that shirt around. It can't do that quite yet, but um, it can uh, uh, resize the shirt. If I show it a shirt in a small size, it can upscale that shirt to, to you know, extra husky. So there's a lot of different things it can do. Um, one of the other things it's capable of doing now is taking one shirt taking a photo of me in this shirt and automatically changing this to four or five different colors on demand. So this is where we're going with, with just images. Yes? Sorry for the question early, but this is kind of relevant. You mentioned that it's really bad at mixing colors to make new ones and stuff. Why is it good at that, but not the other? Um, you have to be able to tell it what colors you want it for. And as with the content, it's going to uh, get it wrong. Now the other, the other thing to keep in mind there is when I spend all day looking at particular colors, um, the colors, I could give an entire lecture on just this if anybody's bored enough, but color is measured in um, uh, something where we refer to the yellow and the blue, uh, the red and the green, and the lightness and the darkness. And within a three-dimensional sphere, those three factors, um, if anybody's familiar with Stargate, it's basically the same concept. Where those three factors intersect is the color. Computers are good at reading the digital approximation of where it should be in that space and then using the wrong pigments to try to reach that space. Each individual pigment actually reacts slightly different than the pigments should. And so when we're measuring something with what's called a delta, the delta will um, technically be correct but visually be inaccurate. And if you take 100 people and have them look at a computer-generated delta, uh, half of them lack the visual acuity to see the difference, and probably five in the group can look at that difference, and weirdly, the five tend to be of the gentler persuasion, um, can tell the difference. So if you ever go into a store and you ask your partner, uh, assuming in this scenario your partner is a man, you say, um, which one should I go with, uh, eggshell cream or lavender white? And they look and they're like, it's the same color. And you're like, it's not the same color. They're clearly different. Um, about half the population is incapable of seeing those color differences at the most basic level. The ones that can, it stands out to them like a sore thumb. Those two colors are as different as blue and yellow to them. And uh, so computers are capable of replacing colors, but not quite right yet, um, which is weird. So I have a video for you, though. Yes? So, uh, you know, it's kind of add two 10-digit numbers together, but if you try and add a nine-digit number to a 10-digit number, it, I don't know if they think that, that was, this was a couple of months ago they were talking about this. It could be the same idea, so you can't add these colors together. It yeah. doesn't come out like that. That's right. And, and just to repeat that, ChatGPT, um, not long ago, I don't know if it's still accurate today either, but it had a hard time adding together nine digit and 10 digit numbers for no reason. It just, and, and there is a reason actually on a background level. People tend to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Computers actually count one, 10, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Because 
10 starts with a one, therefore it must be near the one. And it, it's just, it's a weird programming nerd thing that, um, again, if you, if you want, we can talk all day about weird programming nerd things. So what else is AI capable of? Um, one of the things AI is now capable of doing is making video. But at the moment, it is so bad that it's, it's excellent, okay? <laughs> Isn't that great? Big Mac, it's comfort food that'll make you go. For our extraordinary drive to extravaganza, for your dream. So, uh, needless to say, um, video is not quite there yet. Yeah. Now, now, interestingly, though, how far away are we from AI video being a, a major thing? Not as far as people think. Um, maybe two years, maybe five years, we will be watching fully generated artificial intelligence um, content on, on products like YouTube. And possibly, and this is, this is one of the, the sticklers with the... Um, uh, the, the Authors Guild being on strike and the Actors Guild being on strike right now, um, we might actually be fairly close to being in a world where we can say, literally just go to a prompt and say, you know, imagine Brad Pitt driving a Volvo in the desert and hit enter and have it generate that commercial in real time. <laughs> so we're not, we're not as far from that as, as a lot of people, uh, a lot of laymen may think. And when we get there, hopefully it's going to look better than that. Um, AI audio is another area that we are in. And I, I, I wanted to make sure that the audio was on just so that you can hear this. I want you to think before I post this or show you this, this is not real. This is 100% computer generated. Plastic. You can touch my hair. Undress me everywhere. Wow. So, with regards to audio, we're there now. Right? We can literally recreate Johnny Cash singing Barbie Girl just as easily as if you want to hear um, Frank Sinatra and Johnny Cash sing. Uh, baby, it's cold outside. We can do it. It's there. Technology is currently there. It's fully functional. In a more practical setting, one of the things that I do with this particular technology, although I would prefer doing that, is um, I, do, I deal with a lot of learning. So I understand that there are six different styles of learning that we deal with on a regular basis. And I deal with people who speak French, who speak Spanish, who speak English, uh, Hindi, and uh, one of the problems that we run into is if I'm generating content for a predominantly Spanish-speaking person who lacks a formal education but is a visual learner, I need to regenerate content on the fly, and I can't possibly do that accurately and repetitively but AI can. So now I tell AI what I want the person to learn. And AI recognizes that the person is a visual learner versus a learner based entirely on how they interact with the software. And then it regenerates my content as blog posts or audio posts or technical papers entirely based on their particular learning needs. And right now it's fairly rudimentary. But five years from now, it's just going to be an automated process that, um, that is specialized. And we can do that for customers. If somebody comes to your website, you can translate on the fly. You can show them in their particular language of choice. Um, you can replace your content with images if, uh, if that's how they're going to read better. Um, 
one of the one of the things I love about AI is putting bullet forms in, um, so it'll go through your entire blog post and automatically insert key bullet points so that you don't have to manually go through and do it. Um, on my website, I run a little thing that I built that uh, uh, inserts a too long didn't read. So I'll have like a, a 2,500 word article on something that's entirely boring. And I just put a one paragraph too long didn't read at the top. And, uh, and, and people will just read that computer generated summary for me. Right? So what types of content can it create right now? All of the above. All right. One of the other parts that we, uh, we look at when it comes to, to AI technology is something as simple as Amazon. Amazon has a machine learning. Uh, they're just a handful of the products that they, they do. But Amazon can literally uh, recognize um, a, if from a video. If you're walking across a room, it can recognize that you're carrying a water bottle. It can recognize that that water bottle has a word on it. It can place that water bottle into something. It can it can recognize that 90% of people leave your cart at stage four. It can recognize that the people that leave your cart at stage four are more likely to be left-handed than right-handed. It can recognize that the people who abandon your cart um, are predominantly coming from New Jersey. It can recognize these in a way that no human being is capable of sitting down and, and just delving through the, the data. All right. And then finally, and I know I'm running a little bit over time, but um, SEO optimization, and I will fall back to our old faithful friend Yoast. Um, Yoast is now using artificial intelligence to, uh, to generate your, your metas and your title tags and, and improve your website in general using, using AI. Um, some of the, the things that are being done now is adding images and bullet points to your text, uh, deep linking your articles, um, translating, localizing, those are two different things, and also rewriting for specific audiences. Uh, image optimization, everything from rewriting your file names to resizing based on use. Uh, videos are an interesting thing because it's actually capable of pulling out the content in your videos and putting your chapters as well as creating your translation files on the fly now. So that's a really good use for that. Uh, and finally, the um, content checking. Um, many of us don't even think about it as artificial intelligence, but Grammarly. If you're not doing something similar to Grammarly, you're probably doing yourself a little bit of a service. All it does is tell you you're right. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, and, and really hit publish on a website, having, you know, little red squiggly lines under words, um, as you saw in, um, in Matt's, or sorry, Nick's published, or published, uh, presentation earlier, um, he purposely used the wrong, uh, he used affect instead of effect or, or vice versa, and Grammarly will catch that for you automatically. Um, I, uh, I have Allison who, who catches that for me automatically, um, but for the most part, you know, Grammarly will, will have that effect and, you know, as was said, it's funny because it, it tends then to flag you as AI generated. It is. you to fix something and then you fix it and it tells you to fix it back to what you had it and you know, get in with it so uh, for the sake of time thank you very much and uh, my apologies I can as I pointed out just talk about these things for hours so they uh, they, they have a taser on me and try to limit me all right